Okay, linear programming is the final topic and just to give you like a brief overview of what it is, it will seem very different to all of the things that we've been doing previously concerning um, networks uh, because now we're actually working with actual graphs, graphs that, uh, that we are more used to like these, XY graphs. And in the case of linear programming, linear programming is something that is used in business to optimize uh, and to maximize or minimize profit or um, costs or anything of that nature where the situation can be brought into and turned into algebraic inequalities like these. And then we would have to maximize that situation. What this is going to describe is a region on the graph where the best and the best solutions can be gained. So solutions that um, fit all four of these inequalities, some of which will give us the best possible outcome and some of which will give us the worst, but all of which will um, abide by these rules, if you will. So the first task to do is to be able to draw these, these lines and these areas um, accurately on this graph. So for all of these, you will need a ruler. Okay, so I've brought a nice long metre ruler. Um, so I'm, of course, ready for this. So we're going to start with the top one. This x plus y is greater than or equal to 20. Now, whenever I'm thinking of this, just think of it as x plus y equals 20. Don't worry about that inequality sign to start off with. Just think about plotting this line. So... What we'll be doing is we first think about, well, when x is 0, y is 20, and when y is 0, x is 20. Okay, so that would mean that it would go through 0, 20, and 20, 0. Okay, so we can draw that line on first. Okay, so there is the line x plus y equals 20. Now, what we want is that x plus y be greater than or equal to 20. Okay, so we want one of these sides, one of the sides of the line, either this side or this side. Now, because we want it greater than or equal to, we want a, the area that is above the line. Okay, so above the line meaning this section. You can always substitute in a point that isn't on the line, like 0, 0 in this case. 0 plus 0 isn't greater than or equal to 20, so this is the side we don't want. And we shade it in by just doing a very simple shading like this, okay? Little lines that just say, right, that is the side I don't want, this is the side I do. Okay, so I've dealt with that one. Let's uh, label that one number 1, so I'm label, labeling these as we go, so that's number 1. Now I've got y is less than or equal to 2x. So we need to draw in the line y equals 2x. Now you should know that y equals 2x will go through 0, 0. So we just need another point that it goes through. Um, so for that, you could choose any point that you really like. Um, we could try uh, x is 40, for example. So when x is 40, y is 2 lots of 40, so y is 80. So 40, 80 is a point that it goes through. So I'm just going to make sure I've got this right. 40, 80. So I've got it fairly accurate on my graph. So... This line looks something like this. Okay, so this is going to be my number two. Now I need to shade the correct side of it. 
Now we want y is less than or equal to 2x. So we want the area below it. Okay, That would be this area rather than the area that is above it. You could always check by substituting in a point. We can't substitute in 0, 0 because 0, 0 is on the line. So you could try 0, 20 for example. So 20 is less than or equal to 2 lots of 0. Um, no, that's not quite right. So this is the area that we don't want. So I shade that bit in with simple shading like that. Okay, don't make big scribbly areas, okay? You want to make sure that the examiner can see exactly what you mean. And this is the way that they like it to be done. Okay, so that's number two. Now we've got the third one, x plus y equals 60. Okay, um, so this is very similar to the first one. It's just going through 60 and 60 instead. So when x is 0, y is 60, and when y is 0, x is 60. So you can just go through 60 and 60. So any of these is x plus y equals, whatever that number, it goes through it on the y-axis and it goes through it on the x-axis. So x plus y equals 60 looks something like this. Now we want the area where x plus y is less than or equal to 60, so that's below the line. So we want the area below. So we shade the bit that is above. So that's number three. Then we have x plus 2y is less than or equal to 80. Okay, this is going to take a little bit more thought. So x plus 2y equals 80. Now, when y is 0, x is 80. Okay, so that, that's all right. When y is 0, x is 80. And when x is 0, well, y would have to be 40. 2 lots of 40 makes 80. So that goes through 0, 40. So this is this line. If I can draw it. There we are. And we want when x plus 2y is less than or equal to 80, so we want below the line. So if we want below the line, then we shade above. Like that. Okay? So that's number four. Now, um, once that's done, what you'll find is that in nearly all of these practical examples that we deal with linear programming, x and y must be larger than 0, or greater than equal to 0. Okay, Because if, if x and y uh, reflect maybe the numbers of chairs and tables, for example, if x was chairs and y was tables, we can't have negative numbers of either of those. So really, we should shade either side of the x and y axis. Okay? And what that's done is that it's blocked off this area. This is what's known as the feasible region. Okay? And you need to make sure that you label it. This is the region where feasible answers are coming from. Now, what we're asked to do from this point is maximize f equals 2x plus 5y. This is what is known as the objective function. So f in this case could be profit. Um, it could be expenditure. Um, it could be um, any number of different things, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to draw on what is known as an objective line. Now, this is a um, fairly straightforward thing to do. With an objective line, what we're going to do is we're going to draw on an example 
of what this line would look like. We can't draw it on exactly because we don't have a value of f. So the way to do it is really to look at the coefficients of x and y, which are 2 and 5 in this case. What you do is you can swap those round. So y equals uh, 2 and x equals 5. Okay, So swap them round and then we can plot on 0, 2 and 5, 0. Now the only problem with that is that on my graph that's going to be quite small. So what you can do is you can multiply them both by any number, and I'm going to multiply them both by 10. And what that's going to do is it now goes through 0, 20 and 50, 0. So 0, 20 and 50, 0. So this is my objective line. Now what that does is it says then that with the objective line, as it moves, and it's able to move dependent on the value of f, the last point that it hits on your feasible region will be the maximum. So in this case, it is this point here. This is giving me the maximum. So that's the intersection with number 4 and number 2. Now, in some cases, that's, that may well be very easy to read off your graph. In mine, however, it's not. So <laughs> that's, that's a problem. But it's not an unsolvable problem because I know the equations of those two lines. I have y equals 2x and I have number 4, x plus 2y equals 80. So if I just substitute one into the other using simultaneous equations, I get x plus 4 y, 4x, because the x, the 2x can go in as the y, equals 80, so 5x equals 80, so x equals 16. Okay, so when x is equal to 16, y is equal to 32, because if you substitute that into there, so that will give me my maximum. So it's located at the coordinates 16, 32. And if you substitute those into your objective function, f is equal to 2 lots of 16 plus 5 lots of 32. So that's 160. That's 176. That's 192.